All joining us exclusively now is the new CEO at BOC Aviation, Stephen Townend. Stephen, good to have you with us. Record numbers. The question really is whether that is sustainable going forward. I think it should be. I think uh, you, if you look at the numbers we posted, so 764 million, as you say, um, which beat our previous record high in 2019 of 702. In the core business, our revenues were at record high levels, our cash flows were at record high levels. Uh, we did have some recovery in terms of the insurance settlements from the, the aircraft that were stuck in Russia. Um, but I think uh, what we're seeing in the industry now, is, as you just talked about, is that we're seeing record demand for aircraft. Are your numbers a reflection of the aviation sector? Is it back to a healthy level or are there still pockets of distress? Globally, we're definitely back. Uh, global traffic is now back above 2019 levels. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, even this week, Changi Airport reported that its traffic was back up above 2019 levels. Cathay Pacific announced uh, strong profits th this week. So I think most parts of the world now are back where we would have seen them uh, pre-pandemic. The only trailing piece, I think, is that cross-border China market. Um, China domestic is well ahead of where it was in 2019, uh, but we're seeing that recovering as well. So I think we're seeing this continued momentum now of, of strong recovery in the industry. You've had us talk about the Fed and expectations of uh, an easing in terms of monetary policy. What might be the implications for lessors if we see an easing of rates? So fundamentally, we're a leveraged business. Um, you know, today, we're levered at about three to one. Uh, we're, ac we're actually the largest corporate bond issuer in Singapore. Um, the, and so you know, our largest cash cost, our second largest cost is, is the interest expense. And so if we do see some easing in interest rates in the second half of the year, that should provide us with a, a bit of a tailwind as we move forward. Even as you talk about how you're optimistic about the industry, there are hiccups right now in terms of supply chains, engine, engine issues as well. Uh, how is that being impacted? So we're seeing it across the industry, and this is not just a this year problem. This has been a multi-year issue. It's affected both Airbus and Boeing. It's affected all of the, the major engine manufacturers. Um, what we're seeing is that supply of aircraft is not being able to keep up with demand. And so fundamentally now we've got this situation where traffic has come back strongly. Demand for aircraft is outweighing supply of aircraft, um, which clearly helps people like us that, that have aircraft, have aircraft available for lease. But what's unique now, I think, is that we have not seen this imbalance of demand and supply for almost 20 years. I think it was, it was pre-financial crisis, 05, 06, 07, was the last time we saw the market where it is today. But the thing is, it's happening at a time when airlines want growth. Give us a sense of how long these delays are and perhaps the impact given that you're unable to collect payments for the jets already placed. So firstly, on that point, aircraft that are already placed, people are paying. Our collection rate for, for 2023 was actually above 100%. So we not just collected what was due to us last year, but also some amounts that have been deferred from, from previous periods. Um, in terms of supply, if you look at what happened during the last three years with the, the jets that Airbus and Boeing were unable to produce, we're short probably three to 4,000 aircraft on what would have been normally produced during that period. And so it's going to take several years to really catch that back up again. This, this is not just a 2024 issue. When it comes to delays and deliveries, it also impacts the MAX. What are you hearing from Boeing in terms of how long that is and what is it telling lessors like BOC Aviation? So firstly, it isn't, this isn't just a Boeing issue. Um, you know, we're, as I but said before. But what are you hearing from Boeing? What is it saying? <laughs> so f Boeing's challenge you know, right now obviously is that they have a cap on production, which the FAA has put in place, and that's going to restrain their ability to get back up to the delivery levels that they want to be at. Um, and so we're going to continue to see delays from uh, Boeing across, across the, the types of aircraft that they're delivering. But equally, we're, we're seeing delays elsewhere as well in the supply chain. And Pratt and uh, Whitley a a engines impacting as well. So it's a double, triple whammy. Is there an area of acute shortage within the industry? 
So the, the area of greatest shortage is that narrow body aircraft, the 737, A320 sized aircraft, um, which is where we've seen demand come back most strongly. And, and neither manufacturer, neither Airbus nor Boeing, has been able to raise production back to the levels that they want it. Um, whether it's engine issues, whether it's production quality issues, um, yeah, it's, it's issues across the board for, for the whole supply chain. Uh, you know, Stephen, we know that BOC Aviation has been pretty active in buying uh, aircraft. Are, are there plans to buy more given the growth that you're anticipating? We're always looking to add aircraft. Um, you know, the, the, the growth we had last year was about 10% uh, year on year. We aim to continue that level of growth going forwards. Our, our order book today is uh, about 224 aircraft that deliver basically from now to the end of the decade. Um, but where we see opportunity to add to that, definitely we will. White bodies, would that make sense? It may do at some point. Um, if I look at our existing fleet and order book today, we don't have a wide body aircraft available until 2028. Um, so I think what we're more likely to be doing in the near term is actually helping to finance airlines deliveries of wide body aircraft rather than ordering further aircraft ourselves. Mm. Of course, this is an environment where geopolitical tensions are rising. Might that impact demand in the end? I actually, well, we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we, we never know where, where these things can lead, but um, you know, to date, we haven't really seen that. You know, we've seen demand come back strongly. Um, you know, we've seen demand for our aircraft globally now. Um, and so you know, whether that's coming out of the Americas, out of Europe, the Middle East, uh, here in Southeast Asia, um, you know, we're, we're seeing it globally. You're about, I think, several months into, into the job. Um, what has been the biggest challenge for you? I, I think so. I've been with the company a long time. I've been with the company 23 years. Um, and so, to a certain extent, um, you know, it'll always be evolution rather than revolution. The, um, but it's always different once you become CEO. Um, you, know, you, you now have to worry about everything. Um, the, um, I think the, the, the biggest challenge for us, given the supply chain challenges you were just talking about, is maintaining that growth. I, I think we're in a good position, um, but we've got to make sure that we're able to maintain that now going forwards. What is the ambition? Two, three years down the road, where would you like BOC Aviation to be? So at the moment, we are the largest in Asia. We're one of the top five globally. And you know, certainly, strategically, we want to make sure that we maintain a position in those top five globally. And you know, if I look forward to, to the end of the decade, then we probably need to go from being $25 billion today to 35 to 40 billion by the end of the decade if we're to be sure of maintaining that market position. So what does that mean in terms of fleet size versus <laughs> your rivals, for instance? Mm -hmm. Give us a sense of you know, the, the kind of uh, growth that you're, you're looking yep. at. So you know, what our fleet size today, we've got in the existing fleet about 460 aircraft, 224 on order, so 684 in total. Um, I think by the end of the decade, we have to be taking that closer to 1,000 aircraft. And in terms of profitability? The, uh, you know, we've been consistently profitable. We, we, we exist in a very cyclical industry. Um, we've been around for 30 years, and we've had unbroken profitability throughout that. Um, there'll be some cyclicality in the earnings, um, but I think you know, we can continue to build on what we've generated um, over the years and, and maintain a, a solid return for our shareholders, and importantly, continue paying our dividend. Um, also, when it comes to the aviation sector, the price of oil, price of fuel is key, and we're seeing uh, geopolitics uh, weighing in uh, in terms of prices right now. What assumptions are you making about price and uh, how that may impact demand? So from what we see today, we don't see huge variation in oil price. I think it's been actually more stable in the last one or two years than it had been in, the, in that prior period. And absent some big geopolitical shock, we don't see it trading much outside of that broad area that it has done for the last one or two years. At least some stability amid all the challenges yep. faced by the industry. Stephen Town, an MD and CEO at BOC Aviation.